We're leveling up with Tony D. I hope there's some cool things to do and see. This week on D&D Minus. With the room fully in focus, Purgatoni D looks you all over and says, All right, first things first, let's get you all some better bodies. Better bodies, better skills. That's what I always say. Oh, I should probably explain. So, you see, no matter what you do in hell, your body kind of has two modes. Who you were when you died and a horribly mutilated corpse that eventually dissolves into the river Styx. But here, at my place... Purgatoni D's, you can make improvements. So, uh, tell me, everybody, what do you got? Is there a way for me to get a second tail? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Question, Morgan. Yeah, when you say two bodies, do you mean that, like, we are going to alter our body and walk around hell with the altered body, but the uh, our, our corpse remains unchanged that's what you're saying right um pro I, you know i haven't thought of that i just well then what is this paragraph doing <laughs> well so the according to the mythos that was explained to you when you first came down you're in the body with all the powers that you had when you died right right okay so purgatory is the only place you would be able to gain levels oh okay so th this is not like a we have to keep in mind what our body was when we died. This no, is definitely a, not. No. Okay. This is a we're in purgatory between the levels. We get to level up. Exactly. Nobody has answered my question. I would like to know if I can have two tails. I mean, you could have a second tail if you want to. Can I have nine tails? <laughs> I feel like nine's a little much. Let's go with two now. And if I see you yeah, again. Some of us don't have any. You know, let's go. That's on. right. <laughs> I know. It's honestly, this is your chance, my guy. Did you bring enough tails for the rest of the body? It's like an entry level thing from Adam and Eve. The, the cat of two tails. <laughs> 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 do tieflings have tails? They do. Oh, okay. Some of them. You get it. Okay. This guy gets it over here. The rules of tieflings have been widely, let's say, negotiated by horny <laughs> devil perverts. Yeah. So. And like, th since that's who the, the... Hey, Eli, don't discriminate against our fan base. <laughs> I would never discriminate against my own people. I'm just saying. Horny devil people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the reason those people yeah, existed is... he said it without judgment. The... Why, do you, why <laughs> okay, are you okay. taking that as an insult? Uh, I would refer you to all the stage makeup I've brought into our bedroom and let you know that I'm <laughs> perfectly <laughs> fine with our tiefling uh, perverted brethren. If you dress as Damien, just don't tell me. Just leave it as is. You know what well, I mean? Well, who are you addressing that to? Because it's a very different answer. It's a very, it's very important to. question, Morgan. What if I already have? You have to tell me. It's like <laughs> No, me then you don't have to tell me. That's the whole thing. You dress as gravy, definitely tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, podcast listener at home, they have just gone up two levels. And I know what you're saying. Eli, are they going to go up two levels in between every layer? No. I forgot to do this between the first and second layers or <laughs> was it something in fiction that is going to be brilliant later we'll find out because i sure as hell haven't thought of it either way <laughs> either way they're going up two levels they are now level seven some of you got some cool stuff tell me what you what are you sporting what do you got interesting can i ask a question about some of these items that tony d seems to have available yes all right so that is the second part that i was going to introduce is our Dungeon Master level patrons who get to contribute stuff to the actual campaign have created some of the items here available in Purgatory D's House of Stuff. And uh, so, yeah, which, uh, which one do you have a question about, Heath? Okay, a couple of questions. So there's a sentient coat mm -hmm. that imitates the wearer <laughs> from listener Draven Skull or Shull. Shull. Draven Shull. Yep. Draven Shull. Maybe Shul. Sure. Yeah, could be. Anti Semite? Does it's, it's probably pro, right? <laughs> no, well, you, I mean, you for started not with acknowledging. So yeah, you didn't not. acknowledge. Yeah. 
Ooh. I, I think skulls are positive. Just what? I, I like <laughs> mine. Okay. So the coat, I'm a fan of my anyway, skull. Mm-hmm. The coat that imitates the wearer, does that mean like it attacks effectively while I'm attacking effectively? Oh, definitely not. No, I was. So I'll meet you in the middle. I was going to go with like a sentient coat that sort of sounds like you. Oh, but honestly, I was going to spend most of the time as the coat just being like, me, 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 me. so that's that's where I was. <laughs> that picturing. sounds awesome. But I'm going to move on to another one. Interesting. All right. Wait, wait. I was in picturing. I didn't know that the coat could talk. That's awesome. I thought that the coat was going to be like, you know, the scene in um, Sleeping Beauty at Disney where the, the birds take over the coat. And Ooh, dance with her. <laughs> and they're just walking around in it. Yeah, sure. And I, I was kind of thinking of just having that walking around on top of me so I could Some be magic like magic carpet action. Yeah, I see that. I jump see up that. and meow at the top. And it look like a human. <laughs> like one cat in a trench coat trying to sneak into a movie. See, I was thinking of just like the the watch that Arnold Schwarzenegger had in Total Recall, except it's just your coat. Right? Like Ooh. just the coat walks in. I love this too. And I love everybody. all of this. I really want the robe of many pockets. I have a question about that. (laughs) Well, read us that description uh, and then uh, I'd love to hear your question. Robe of many pockets by Chief Non-Berry Pineapple. Non-binary pineapple. pineapple. (laughs) (laughs) Heavy, soft plaid bathrobe that has an ever-shifting number and size of pockets. The contents of the pockets change and shift location hourly. Pocket contents magically appear, plucked from the pockets of beans within 30 feet of the robe at any given time, and disappear into pockets within 30 feet as randomly as they appeared. Keith, ask your question before I go on, because it's got a long description. Yeah, okay. So, do you have control over when this first activates? Mm Mm-hmm. Let me see. Well, it says the robe wearer has no control over what items end up in the pockets. So right. okay, but w- but, but when when it, when it starts doing stuff, do I have control right, the over that? The activation, the trigger. No, I don't think so. <laughs> because one it happens once an hour on like the 37 and I just have to hope that it works out. Yeah, I mean well, so let me read the rest of the description because I think this will clarify for the folks at home. Oh yeah, no. Robes wearer has no control over what items end up in the pockets nor when the items leave the pocket. Yeah. I'm wondering though can I put on my robe and be like, it does something now? No, I think it's more like a what's around me. I'll try and get a lucky pull from somebody who has pockets around me. Or sometime in the next hour, I'm going to try to do that. Yes, that's that's kind of what I'm getting at. Like, does it do a thing <laughs> when I want? So, okay, here's the question. Yeah, what it does is when you reach into the pockets of that robe, it will randomly choose another pocket or bag somewhere in within okay, 30 feet so I can feet of activate you? it on purpose. Yes, you activate it. Yeah, you just don't control what's in the pocket. Oh. Right. And it looks like the, the hour thing is like once per fight. I have a question too. Sure. Mine is about the plus three long sl- sword of Slap Your Dad by Caveat Empty. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Caveat Emptor, nice. The description is, not only is this a plus three longsword, but on a natural roll of 18 or better, the veils of distance and dimension part and everyone in view sees a floating white glove slapping the target's father or closest analog in the face or closest analog, whether that being is alive or dead, indeed showing the afterlife plane or ghost if necessary. Sure. So my question is, can I take that one quick before anybody else has a chance to? <laughs> yes, that is dibs. That is dibs. That is your plus three long sword. All right, sword now. so dibs then. Okay. All right. A lot of dads are getting. You're good at swords. That's you get gonna slapped be in the face when you took it just now. <laughs> yeah. Tony D. Tony D's dad. Tony D's dad. Oh my God, Carl the Puckle Pegacorn. <laughs> Anthony D. Yes, yeah. that's what I was trying to form is an Anthony, uh, an Anthony Senior in there. All right, my father's <laughs> Anthony. Call me Tony. Nice. And Noah, while we're talking about uh, things that Vardos is walking away from this level up with, you have some cool new powers. Yes, I do. I have. Uh, I've picked up two new auras. Ooh, a thing Noah never thought he'd have to say again. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Well, I like I thought maybe if I got divorced I might have to say it again. But yeah, right, so sure. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I what auras did you have in your collection before? I actually I had none that I'm aware of except for maybe the uh, you know, the odor or whatever, but now I have aura of protection, 
which means that while I'm conscious, anybody within 10 feet of me gets a plus two bonus on all saving throws. Oh, I am definitely becoming a lap cat. Fuck yeah. Mm -hmm. you on the shoulder or something. <laughs> shoulder cat. Hell yeah. Back cat. And then I also, that was at level six. And then at level seven, I also pick up Aura of Devotion. While you are conscious, friendly creatures, including you within 10 feet, can't be charmed. So Ooh. hell yeah. Not a lot of people trying to charm us in hell so far, but. Uh, but you never know. Yep. It could happen. All right. Is, th is there an area where I would might have auras that are new or <laughs> uh, I have any? Have you, uh, have you up updated your character yet? I do notice that I have a, a new weapon called Tyrioli, which is pretty sweet. Oh, do you? Yeah. I don't think you do. So I have Tyrion lick my balls. You forgot to give yourself the Tyrion two Lai. extra levels you have, Keith. What? I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're a level seven. Do you mean like a long rest? No. no. <laughs> I mean, you also get a long rest, but you get an ability score improvement. Nice. Or a feat, or you could take a feat and feats Or you are could like, take a feat. Yeah. Feats are kind of awesome. But you're going to have to comb through like a hundred of them to find one. Some people are into feet and some people aren't. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like, it's not universally awesome. Mm -hmm. That's right. But I'll tell you, no matter what, and I'll give Heath the time. I won't make him choose that live on air right now. But you know what else you have? At seventh level, you get Remarkable Athlete. Starting at seventh level, you can add half your proficiency bonus roundup to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check you make that doesn't already use your proficiency bonus. In addition. When you make a running long jump, the distance you can cover increases by a number of feet equal to your strength modifier. You're a long jump and golden retriever, my friend. You could have gotten over the bridge. Uh huh. Oh, okay. So <laughs> in I get, like the I'm, second episode, I'm a plus seven strength modifier, so I can jump seven more feet if I do a running long. Seven more feet than you could already jump. You're you you have in the term and in, in the way the kids are saying it hops. I'm just going to be like Carl Lewising it all over for no reason. All over the place. Fun. Yeah. Okay. Between Vardos's constant dive rolls and your new long jumps, this is going to be a very airborne campaign from now Fuck on. Yeah, we are going to catch so many Frisbees. I have a fun spell to introduce then. Please. I have taken on Fly, the spell. Ooh. And the good news is because it is over third level, I can make two people fly at once. Ooh. So I can make me and Achoom just fly around while you guys bash stuff. Long jump. I can basically already fly like Carl Lewis. Just for the <laughs> <record>. <laughs> kind of feels anticlimactic. Gravy does his first epic long jump forward and Damien's just floating sort of side <laughs> positions next to him like you're gonna have to land Achoom's eventually. Achoom's floating next to him and, and because yeah. she's so dug into my shoulder I'm flying hanging. <laughs> yep. Oh, I was picturing her doing the pug over water thing where she's just pedaling her feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just pedaling his feet. Paddle, 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 paddle. Well, we will find out at some point whether Heath took an ability score improvement or a feat. We won't make him choose that now. Ooh, wait, what other feat can I choose or should I just figure it out later? There's a huge list. I don't want yeah. to put you on the spot now, okay. but there's a, there's a giant list. And... Well, hello, podcast listener. Here we are in the future where Heath has chosen his feet. Heath, welcome to the inside of the doodly-doo. Welcome to the future. I feel welcomed <laughs> here in the future. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so you chose magic Today's the 27th initiative. of March at 3.22 p.m. Oh, how dare you. Sorry. How dare you. Okay. So you chose magic initiate, which means you learn two cantrips of your choice from the wizard spell list. In addition, you're going to get to choose one first level spell from the wizard spell list. You learn that spell. You can cast it at the lowest level. Once you cast it, you need to finish a long rest before you can cast it again using the feet. So, so I have a magic sword now. It's magical. Exactly. Yeah. So here's what I'm going to say happens. Nice. While the others are rummaging through Tony's bins of just okay stuff, you notice Perga Tony D eyeing your sword. And he sort of scoots you to the side and says, uh, hey, is that a, is that Tyrioli of the Canis Nation? Uh, uh, it's Tyrioli, yeah. How, how, how'd you get that? Yeah, so it, it, it turns, it's just, it's on a list of like swords. You can just, you can just put them into your thing and then you have it. But then somebody often for spite will be like, it's actually to lick my balls and it doesn't have its magical powers. But like, can you give it like magical powers again? Uh, yeah, I mean, let me see. Let me see. Uh, it looks like it's in slumber or, or part of it's been severed. Uh, yeah. I think I could try to wake it up. Okay, that, it, it just mostly yells at me if you do wake it up. So just be ready for that. 
Yeah, yeah. So he straightens his tank top and whispers some ancient words and then touches the closed eye on Tyrulai's hilt with a brass wand. Suddenly, the eye on the hilt of Tyrulai opens wide in a deep rage and fire blasts out of the eye into the infinite space that makes up Purgatoni D's warehouse. Yeah, sorry. No, that's what I was talking about. He's wow. Kind of angry all the time. Uh, this sword is not happy you have it. Um, mm. I'm guessing it's going to try and do that to you every time you open the eye yeah. up. But, you know. Uh, that happens. Maybe you could put these spells to good use uh, here. And he hands you the brass wand and says, uh, just remember, point it away from you. Okay? Point it away, I got it. So, uh, podcast listener, would you hear Heath using spells in the future? He is aiming the <laughs> anger of his now awakened sword <laughs> Excellent. at his enemies. Okay, so I get one can or no two cantrips and one first level spell yes okay i have plans for that should i tell them to you now oh no let's let's find out in the doing okay all right back in the time dimension ow <laughs> hey everybody just jumping in to thank you once again for listening to the show i know i know it's a short one this week and that is a bummer but you know who's not experiencing less D&D minus that's week. That's right, the patrons. The patrons over at patreon.com forward slash D&D minus, all spelled out, are enjoying a brand new Dungeon Master's Corner. We get into AI in D&D. We get into what it's like to use maps on this season, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. I get distracted and talk about collective action for way too long, and you can hear it with our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus all spelled out. Give us as little as a dollar. You get access to all sorts of cool stuff, including our bonus episodes and all four dungeon masters corners. All right. We'll let you get back to the show and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. I would like the robe of many pockets, by the way. Damn it. And the robe of many pockets. Excellent. A robe based character. Nice. So I can like, I, I like the idea that this is highly uncontrollable. And so there's going to be this matrix that Eli has to use, but it's going to, it's going to go <laughs> really badly for me, I feel like, but that's fine. You I'm and cool with fucking it. pockets in robes. Like dumb shit's going to show up in my pockets, but I'm going to figure, so I'm going to do some stuff with We're it. We're going to walk by so <laughs> many bakeries. We'll find bread, out. bread, 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 <laughs> bread, bread. <laughs> Listen, if it's a lot of bread, I'm everybody wins. Pretty happy with the result of this. But that <laughs> bread has to be in a pocket. Yeah. So like, Ooh, what if it's a hot pocket? Oh, <laughs> oh, see, we're coming up with shit already. It's already, <laughs> it's already all coming together. All I'm right, diarrhea pocket. That'll fit a lot of the things that happen. Wow. Di did you say diarrhea pocket? Yeah. <laughs> it's a Jim Gaffigan reference. <laughs> Oh, okay, good. Is right. it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were just like, maybe there's, someone's got a bunch of diarrhea maybe in their pocket. fucking boogers in a pocket. I don't know. Listen, <laughs> that, was, uh, that was, I mean, that was what eight. I was dealing with. <laughs> Much more likely boogers than diarrhea. I was finding it hard to yes and. Thank you for supporting I, me. Um, in my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Maybe there's diarrhea. I would like to <laughs> shit his pockets, please. Ooh. <laughs> Tony D reaches into my pocket. Oh my God, did you just shit into his pocket? Ooh. Now it's in my pocket. <laughs> That's a good point. Can Heath send by pocket? Yeah. I mean, you I can. can I can't really control it very well, but that does happen. Actually, he cannot control that at all. A stock boy walking by is like, someone just shat in my pocket, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> I only make $8 an hour because it's purgatory. Can I also have the robe of many pockets? No, you can't also okay. have the robe of many pockets. Because <laughs> then me and you are just going to be stealing from each other randomly Ooh. the whole time. And then you end up holding hands and that's how your characters fall in love. <laughs> then I will take Dr. Plox's medicinal pellet boxes. Ooh, by Dominic. And nope, by... There is no by. There's no... It's not by anybody. I I'm sure it's by it. Right. It might be. It's probably by, by Doctor Plox. Plox. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe it's by Doctor Plox. If if you if it's by you, I think it's by Dominic, aka Keithleton. Really? Yeah. The one above it is by that person. So read that description for us, Morgan. Once per day, a player can take a medicinal pellet to cure an ailment or curse. However, when doing so, they must roll for one d four side effects, 
and a D20 or larger if I come up with a lot of funny side effects when I make the table. I don't know who I is there, but yep. And a D20 to determine which side effects. All right. I like it. Awesome. Oh, you get multiple side effects based on the D4 Mm -hmm. and then a D20 for each of the ones you get. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm assuming that they're not all negative. I'm assuming there's some neutral ones. No, there'll there'll be a wide Somebody's going to be a falcon at some point. Yeah, that type of stuff. All right. Well, if you did create that, send me the fucking side effects table. (laughs) Otherwise, I'm going to have to make that shit. Uh, Any other changes, Morgan? Any other spells or powers? I did take on enlarge reduce as well. So, you know, if we meet Miska the wolf spider, we'll just do the same thing. Yeah. But also I, uh, I, <laughs> this is a bardic spell. I didn't like have to create this outside. I have polymorph. Ooh. So I could turn gravy into a falcon technically. Delightful. And then make him really, really small. <laughs> We're playing all the hits tonight. And do you have any make new him songs? Fly. You could make me as big as a horse and then I could just ride you, like, like carry you guys through things. Oh, I like that. So the largest, I don't know if this is polymorph. This might be the next like level of polymorph, but the largest, like the best creature I can do is Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's dope. That's fucking awesome. Well, that's the best creature. Yeah. That is the that best is. creature. So that's like pretty much all the creatures. Yeah. A tomb <laughs> into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. There's so much there. Except for the pug, which is a better creature. Ooh. We should definitely come up with a pug stat set. A Tyrannosaurus yeah. pug would be better. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Pugosaurus Rex. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Gravy, I know you're still working on that feat and ability thing. I think we'll probably find out about that either next episode or in the second half of this one. Achoom, mm. I think that just leaves it to you. What what are you uh, what are you sporting for this next level? Well, I would like I have a journey. I have a character arc, if you will, that I've noticed I've been going on. And as one of my goals for this coming arc, I would like to be able to catch that fucking mouse. So I get myself snare and I'm going to just set snares around because now I can do that. And if Bartholomew the fucking turd boy ever steps into one, then I can, um, you know, catch him and have a little mousy snack. Okay. You know, as a guy who once (laughs) like shat himself while doing a backflip pantsless, I feel like this, this episode has a lot of poop in it. It has a lot of poop in it. It does have a lot of poop this in it. It's a poopful episode. By the way, thanks to everybody who's bought from BartholomewMerch.com. We're trying to get everything back in stock right now. The stuffies especially went incredibly quickly. So please be patient for those orders. Our shipping team in Vietnam is doing their best they can. Okay. Whose side are you on? Exactly. That is a level one spell though. So I actually got banishment as well. Ooh. Nice. Which means that I can just, you know, Banish him to another level whenever right. I catch him. So Anna has largely chosen spells and level upgrades based on the mouse she forced me to invent. <laughs> so we're all, we all have different priorities as we move forward in this adventure. <laughs> I really thought Bartholomew was going to like run in and slap <laughs> a tomb before that <laughs> trap was like part of the magic kit, you know, one last time. I, I would like to hazard that um, I had a great plan which was that I wanted to know where things were in the city. And apparently I didn't need to know that. And he's a little bitch. So <laughs> I don't think it's fair to blame Anna for the existence of Bartholomew. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I, I don't think it's fair to blame Bartholomew for the existence of Bartholomew. <laughs> I would uh, like to have the wand of no fuck you. And because I don't have opposable thumbs, I would like to change that, if I may, to the catnip... <laughs> toy of no fuck you oh all right yeah sure read that description this is by uh <laughs> okay. patron nettle sentinel so anna can i su- can i just make a quick yes suggestion as as a cat person because mm. there are little cat ones you would just have a one it would just have a little dangly squirmel off the end of oh, it okay yes oh, yes absolutely. Yeah. a little dangly squirrel on the uh, yes absolutely 100 okay. percent. yes the wand of no fuck you this Plus one arcane focus allows the wielder to cast counter spell at third level once per long rest. If a spell of fifth level or lower is countered this way, the creature holding the wand may cast the same spell that was countered on their turn without Ooh. using a spell slot. Ooh. That's fucking badass. Man. Yes, please. All right. Well. Leveled up and outfitted, 
With new equipment, the shelves and space of Purgatoni D's start to disappear around you. But before you go, you hear Purgatoni D say, Enjoy Menoris. I hear it's nice. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.